Hey guys, what's happening? So, in my quest to solve my death wobble problem, I've pr pretty much gone through my whole suspension, fixed everything, um, all the loose parts. You know, I just put an adjustable track bar on there. Before that, I put an adjustable tra drag link on there. And I guess I didn't want to believe it. But I didn't start having this problem until I converted to my 442 box. And I guess that well, I bought it online, I think I bought it on eBay. But it supposedly was rebuilt. And, um, but what's funny is that it was actually with my, with my steering stabilizer on there, it kind of dampened the, dampened the problem, you know? And actually having a bunch of loose components like the track bar and uh, I had a loose steering shaft I've made videos about, you know, me tr trying to solve this, my play issue with my death wobble problem. But by fixing everything, it actually just amplified my death wobble problem. Because there's no longer like a shock or space to pick up the the death wobble, you know. So by having like a bunch of loose components, it was actually actually acting as like a damper to the actual root cause of the problem. So yeah, I didn't really want to believe it, but it's like man, how could like a, a, a rebuilt steering gear be so bad, you know? But let me, I I know what the problem is. I already got the parts to fix it. Um, it just sucks. I have to take the whole steering gear out of my uh, out of my Bronco here. But let me show you real fast what's up. Um, I've actually noticed this for a while, but I just didn't think it, man, it didn't seem like it was enough to create like a death wobble problem, but, um, let me show you what's up. Alright, so here is the, uh, 442 box. So it's basically like a 19, like early or late 80s or 70s, um, uh, 4x4 box, F250, Bronco, um, but what they do is they take uh, you take the the piston and the worm gear out of a, like a '80s four x two, you know, like a two wheel drive truck. Um, and the reason why you do that is because these things are reversed, so it reverses the way it, it turns. Um, yeah, because on the other one, the actual Pittman's arm, a Pittman arm on the, on the other side. So you have to reverse the actual rotation of the shaft, uh, but you keep the same box and like the same. Um, uh, what's it called? Not stub shaft. It's called the uh, the shaft right here. Uh, sector shaft. Um, all right. So the play is actually right here. The, the, there's a bad bearing in there. So you try, I'm turning this right now. I don't know if you can see that. So besides this turning a little bit, you know, this whole thing is going back and forth this way. I mean, see that play? I don't know if you can see that. I mean, is that causing the... I mean, look at that. I mean, what else could be causing my death wobble? Because everything else is fixed and replaced. Everything's tight in the joints, you know? And what's funny is the only movement you see is actually not... Really, I mean, you're going to have a little bit in here and there, but... On the, on the drag link, but... I'm all that turning and play is in this, in this, in this bearings. So, I mean, I rebuilt the original, I re this originally was a, this is a 66 Bronco, but it originally had, you know, obviously manual steering, but then I had a real like Bronco power steering box in there for, for many, many, many years. I mean, I've had this Bronco for over 20 years. Um, I think I put this in like, like four or five years ago, but go, but as soon as I put this in, I had problems. So like a lot of play in the wheel and, just it was kind of all over the road um but i guess i didn't really want to believe that uh, a fully rebuilt box by a supposed specialist um would suck like this so um ah, it's kind of to take it off so i'm gonna have to pull down the uh pitman arm here and then uh i'm gonna have to probably pull from the top because this hoop is in the way and then uh i do actually have like a Take those two fittings off, take the steering shaft off. I'm about to probably pull it from the top. I think that's how I put it in. But yeah, I got this reinforced plate right here, and it's all reinforced, you know, because I did, for years I was going through trying to fix everything. Like, what the hell's causing my, uh, my issues? Um, but now that I've gone through it all, it just, just amplified my problem. Like, once I fixed my, my track bar, it made this thing so it, it, the death wobbles, especially even with my steering stable offer. 
with the steering stabilizer off, it's crazy amplified. I can't even drive this thing down the road. Death wobble so bad. Um, all right, let me take this thing off. It's gonna take a while. Actually, before I take the whole steering gear out, I'm gonna see if I can just pull the whole sector shaft from the top and uh, maybe see if I can check out the bearings, maybe see what's inside there. If I can get this awesome. on camera. So I'm assuming once I get the sector shaft out, I'll have a lot of fluid coming out the bottom. Just like I thought. See? You know, I was under the impression from everything I read that these were actually bearings, roller bearings. But that looks like a bushing to me. So, um, hmm. Because I had the roller bearings. I mean, I mean, it looks like there's a roller bearing on the top with the adjuster, and that is. Um, hmm. All right, so this is probably, I'm not even sure what's up with this thing, but there's no, as far as I can tell, this isn't a bushing. That is a part of the core. You can tell at the very, at the very bottom. See there, right there? It's not like, you can tell it's not bushing in there. So this material right here, yeah, that's like, that's part of the, that's part of the casting. So I might be out of luck here because look at this. This, this is what I was talking about right here, right? So this is the area that rests against here like that. So see that right there? This is the, material that's normally here. I mean, I shouldn't be having rocking like that. So that's all my death wobble right there. Um, I don't know if I can get this thing bored out, line board or something. Um, yeah, I guess I could. I mean, I do have CNC machines. Um, I mean, I have a mill. I, don't, I, don't, I guess I could. I don't know, man. I can maybe do it myself. You can think about that. Uh, get like a boring tool. I don't know if I, I, would, I could do like a deep bore maybe. I'm not sure. It might just be cheaper to... Um, cheaper to uh, pay somebody to do it. I'm not sure. Or just buy all these power steering gear. I could buy another remanufactured one for probably two or three hundred bucks. Don't know if it's going to have the same problem or not. And then just swap out my internals. Yeah, we already have the good internals that works for the 442. Yeah, it's been like this from, from day one. So I whoever built this thing didn't check this. I don't think it's supposed to be, I don't know. Is it supposed to be like that? No, I mean, it can't be like that. This is creating death wobble. Is it the wrong sector shaft? No, this would be the sector shaft. Because when you're changing in the thing, it's just the, the, the piston. Or, I mean, yeah, the piston and the, and, and the, what's it called? The worm gear, because it's the opposite direction. You're not messing with the sector shaft. So this was just a bad rebuild. I gotta go do some research and I'll figure out a solution. All right, so uh, it's been a couple days since I left off, I mean, a week before I left off with this thing. But I actually ordered another brand new um, Chinese made box. So it was on Amazon, it was like 400 bucks, you know, with tax. Um, but the issue, like I said, with these, uh, 442s or like these older, like, uh, Ford ones is like that the stub shaft gets all, mine's all egg shaped. Um, so well, I'm going to try to bore this out. I'm, I'm going to try to see if I maybe come up with an idea of mounting this to my mill here. And I actually bought a boring head, which normally I don't normally use a lot of boring heads because normally I CNC this stuff round, right? So I haven't really need to have a boring head yet, you know. So bought a boring head. It's like sixty bucks, and so maybe I can bore out this thing enough to get one of those bearings in there I showed you earlier. Um, you know, then then rolling up the roller bearings in there. So in case it gets burned out again, I can just replace the bearing or create a bushing. I'm not sure right now. Like some kind of bronze bushing, but. Uh, but worst case scenario, if I, if I fail on this thing, this thing is basically junk. So if I fail on that, then um, I can just swap the, uh, because these things actually, uh, this is called a kind of reverse rotation. So if you turn it clockwise, this thing goes counterclockwise. Whereas a 442 box, if you turn it you know, this way, it goes clockwise. Oh. 
Oh, it, there. it goes clockwise. So you turn it clockwise, this goes clockwise. A regular standard one, you turn it clockwise, it goes counterclockwise. All right, so, so here is the piston pulled out. So if I wanted to 442 this box, I would just take this whole part and slide it in there. So, I mean, if this thing actually truly is like factory spec Ford stuff, then this would actually slide right in there. Well, my first concern with this box is the 916s that the other one actually used, you know, for here. Um, it's actually metric. Well, it's not the same and this was actually 18 millimeter so my concern with that is that the stub shaft would be different you know and the bore diameter you know all right so this is I mean, actually kind of what i was worried about is that they're different um that has an o-ring seal on it whereas this one actually has a top seal that's my concern is that the, the insides would be slightly different, you know, so they wouldn't, the piston wouldn't fit in there. Look at that. I think that's a bigger shaft, too. Damn it, I'll compare them, bring them over here. Not for me to get, but um, see that there? It has some needle bearings on the top, too. So that's actually an improvement. Um, but the bottom part, which actually gets all the play and all the banging, there is no needle. It's just metal on metal. So that's not an improvement. Um, and that's actually, like I said, that's where all the banging happens. So there needs to be a needle bearing down there. Um, all right, I'm going to measure the diameter of the difference between these journals. Okay, that's actually where it goes. Okay. So in, I don't know, it's flashing, but okay. So it's 33, I, I do everything in metric if I can. 33.5 or six. 35, I mean, these things might be a little beat up a little bit, but I mean, this is about a millimeter bigger or a millimeter and a half, 34. I mean, this, you got to remember, this one sort of slightly beat it up, beat up a little bit. So it's about a millimeter bigger. I don't know, man. Do I take the risk for 400 bucks? Like I said, I guess I don't really know until I pull this part off to see the, the piston diameter. You know, honestly, this this Chinese gearbox, this Chinese box, is actually more stout than the American one, the factory one. I mean, just even look at here, you know, the gears are so much bigger, you know. Oh, I'm actually wondering about this thing. Um, there's so many differences in the factory, you know. It's so about seventy nine. Seventy nine, eighty nine. This is what I also have to be. Um, so yeah, I don't think this can be used as a four four two box donor um, because this this is about a millimeter bigger. This piston right here is a millimeter bigger than this piston. This is like seventy nine eighty, and this thing is like eighty eighty. So it's about a millimeter bigger. So in theory, this thing won't even fit into this bore. You know, there shouldn't be enough play in this board. Like, that's a tight clearance fit. There's no way I'm getting that thing in there. And I, I don't want to take it apart any further, you know. So, I don't want to take it back. Because I'm going to find out, man, it's... Yeah, the whole design is different, though. You know, like the seal design. Um, everything's different. So, the outside looks the same, you know, but the metric bolts. Yeah, I'm not going to get this on camera. Because just like I can't work and look down at the same time. Um... So I'm going to use my little um, MPG to lower the Z down and make adjustments. So it's kind of like a CNC hand manual, but I'm kind of bummed I couldn't use my probes. So I had to kind of eyeball everything. All right, that's my first pass. It's kind of fun because it's new to me and I've never done this before. So, yeah, because it was kind of egg shaped. That's why you see like the die, I don't even see the die come on that side. So I need to get the egg shape gone and like I said, open it up for that bearing size. So I'm, I went down about 17 millimeter. 
So actually kind of the way I dialed in too is just by having hitting the DICOM and uh, just kind of getting it, even though I actually had the dial indicator and the, and the probe, I couldn't get it to work right. So kind of just eyeballed it with the DICOM, you know, kind of get it centered. You can kind of see a little ridge forming now down here. That's actually what I want. I want the bearing to be pressed against that thing right there. You can see that, there it is guys. I actually made it a little bit too big, but you know, nothing I can do about it now. I can glue it in there. It's not gonna pop out anyways because it's clipped in with the seals in the front here, you know? The seals and the, and the spacers actually will prevent the thing from popping out. Um, all right, I'm gonna take it out of the vise here and uh, I mean, see if it makes any difference. So I wanna do the same thing for the side. I'm gonna flip it around. All right, there's a closer look at it. So I gotta go back and it actually does feel tighter, but there's still a little bit of play. It's not, I wish I would have been able to get a little bit of um, pressed in there because if I would have pressed it, it would have brought it in just a slight hair to make this a little bit tighter. Um, like I said, on the, I don't know if you saw the other part of the video, I can't remember if I, it's gonna be part of this video or not, but the other like uh, Chinese version of this box, you know, had a bearing on the top and not the bottom. I mean, I'll try to get this on camera for you guys. Uh, I love watching this stuff. I watch all, all those machining channels on uh, on YouTube. All right, some zoom there. Got that second hole done. All right, there's a close look at the bearings. And there we go. Well, I do have some slight play in it a little bit still. It's dramatically better than it was. Um, I mean, it's a little tight. A couple spots, but I think just, there's no lubrication in there also right now. I mean, all right, so I finally got a picture of this diagram. It was actually this the seal kit that I bought. I know it's interesting, which mine did not have, is that right there, sector shaft bushing. You know, I didn't have that in mine. Mine was just basically metal on metal. So maybe I'm going uh, into too much detail in this video, but remember when I said the upper stuff would just in case this thing didn't seat right or wasn't in there tight enough, this thing would keep it. This front pack would, and, and, the, and the, what's it called? The, uh, I forget, it's not a C-clip, but if it's for the name of the clip, that would keep everything packed in there in case this thing ever came loose. And on the other side, the sector shaft would keep the other one in place. The sector shaft would actually keep that from popping out, even though it's actually pretty tight in there. So, hey, right, there's the, the uh, pack, the seal pack. That's the bearing in there. All right, so I'm finishing this thing up here now. And so if you guys aren't familiar with steering boxes, this little shaft right here, it aligns that piston goes back and forth. So as you twist it here, see that? It goes back and forth. So the adjuster on the top, what that does, this little thing right here, like what normally has a cap on it, this little screw, when you go up and down, it brings this thing up and down, and it tightens these teeth. Brings it, when you bring it lower, it makes it tighter. But if you go too tight, then the thing will bind, you can't steer all the way. So there's a, kind of like a, you know, you have to kind of experiment with it to get the best fitting on it. All right, got back this back in here. If I mentioned that I have a hydro boost. All right, in a second, I'll pump. All right, so before I put this thing back together, I'm gonna fill it with fluid, test it. Yeah, you don't really wanna do any adjustments, you know, while your tires are on, especially get the air bubbles out. Like you don't wanna put this in like any major load until you get all the bubbles out, blit bled. Okay, so I'm messing with the sector shaft adjuster here, just trying to get the rest of the play out. The trick is, if you make it too tight, your steering wheel will bind, you're not gonna be able to come out of a turn, you'll be locked up. So you can make small adjustments and then, um, you know, kind of test it, but yeah, don't do, yeah, but obviously you'll, you'll, you'll find out if you make it too tight, <laughs> you'll be stuck. <laughs> all right, awesome. Death wobble's gone. Pretty stoked about that. I've been fighting with that for years. 
<laughs> I didn't want. I didn't want to believe it, man. I really didn't want to believe a a rebuild box from the get go was had a bad uh, stub shaft, you know, sector shaft. Um, yeah, I just couldn't believe it. So I thought it had to have been other components, you know. I just didn't really. Then I started looking at it closely and I saw the play in it, you know. But all right, I don't expect most people to have mills and stuff like this in their garage. Um, but you saw I accomplished it, so if you guys maybe let's give you guys some ideas. But I think uh, you know if these bearings ever wear out, I might just do like bronze bushings or whatever. But uh, man, I'm excited that I I've been dealing with the death wobble for years. Uh, things all over the road, you know. Like I said, I got adjustable track bar, adjustable drag link. You know, thinking there was something wrong with it, replace all the bushings. Um, hi right, guys, cool, stoked.